Not like this. He was one of us. We have to deal with him. You're right. Okay. I'm sorry, Forrest. Welcome back. Joseph Kendo here. Of the various different weapons carried by Star's officers, most were under-equipped for their investigation in the Arclay Mountains. However, this wasn't entirely the case. Today on the gun bench, we have the STARS Grenade Launcher, the high-capacity special-purpose weapon, widely versatile with different types of 40mm shells. While it wasn't technically adopted into the STARS arsenal, it's been most notoriously seen as the primary weapon of Forrest Speyer during the Mansion Incident in 1998. Now that we have it in our hands, let's take a look into its backstory, familiar design, and pivotal role in the fate of this Bravo Team officer. Within the series' great debut of Resident Evil, released in 1996, various weapons of the game can be found throughout the different regions of the mansion as players begin their investigation into the disappearance of the Star's Bravo Team. When playing as Jill Valentine, after traversing the dining hall, she unveils the grim fate of the first missing officer, Kenneth J. Sullivan, leading Jill to continue her search for the remaining members of Bravo Team. Soon after, she encounters her next clue when passing by a puddle of blood on the east side of the mansion, followed by a second large streak smeared against the wall. When examined, it reads, I hope this blood isn't from my teammates. After exiting the hallway, Jill is met at gunpoint by her fellow officer, Barry Burton, who has something to show her. But just take a look at this! Presenting the body of another Bravo Team officer. It's Forrest! Oh my god! Barry speculates that the cause of death had to do with an attack from crows, but before leaving, he makes sure to give Jill the weapon of her former teammate. Hey, Jill. This must have been Forrest's. You don't have a weapon. Take this with you. The weapon obtained is referred to as Bazooka. However, upon first glance, you will quickly recognize that the Bazooka is incorrectly named. As its description reads, a launcher can be loaded with various rounds, and while its model name isn't listed in the description, it can be identified as the Arwen 37. The development of the Arwen 37 took place in the late 1970s, designed and manufactured by the British Royal Small Arms Factory, the name Arwen standing for Anti-Riot Weapon Infield, and the number 37 indicating its ammunition type of 37mm rounds. This projectile launcher is shell ejecting and utilizes a five round capacity rotary style magazine, but it's actually designed with the intended use to subdue crowds during public riots, as it only fires at low velocity with less lethal munitions such as tear gas and impact baton rounds. When compared to the weapon found in game, we can note that it no longer features the ribbed barrel and that the foregrip is missing. It also has the capability of firing flame, acidic, and explosive rounds, which in fact classifies it as a grenade launcher, unlike the real-life R-137. A grenade launcher had not been officially adopted into the arsenal of stars, since there was not yet a demand for explosive launchers or any weapons deemed more powerful than necessary. However, Alpha Team weapons specialist Joseph Frost procured three prototype grenade launchers, which seemed to be new products of Seiko Defense, all of which slightly varied from the other. These launchers had only seen use during combat lectures, which were held in preparation for actual battle. Even though Forrest Speyer was known for his marksman abilities, he was equipped with the prototype grenade launcher to further test it for trial and evaluation. This decision may have been ultimately responsible for his tragic cause of death, being that his grenade launcher served as insufficient defense to fend off a murder of crows. Six years later, the events of the first game were revisited in the 2002 release of Resident Evil Remake. For the most part, the story was retold faithfully to the original title, including Jill's encounter with Barry at gunpoint on the East Terrace balcony, only to be informed with his tragic discovery. Well, uh, I think you should take a look at this. I warn you though, it's not pretty. It's forest.
I could have done this to him. God only knows, but I'm gonna find out what did this to him. Jill, could you investigate other areas? Yeah, sure. Jill, this is no longer useful, the forest. We don't know what's going to happen. Take it with you. Once obtained, the weapon from the body can be identified as the grenade launcher. When empty, its description reads, a gun that fires grenade rounds, acid rounds, or incendiary rounds. And this time, it's modeled with a renovated design. The model of this new grenade launcher cannot directly be identified, as it's built with a hybrid design containing various components of other small arms. To start, it features the lower receiver of the CAR-15. Everything from the fire selector, pistol grip, and collapsible stock are all faithfully retained, with the stock ending in a rubberized butt pad, although its sling point has been removed and it utilizes a rotary-style magazine reminiscent of the R-137, along with a similar flip-up sight system. Looking at the top of the gun, a raised Picatinny rail is included for optic attachments, along with a quad rail system shrouded over the barrel, with three of the rails being equipped with Knight's Armament rail covers, and a Knight's Armament vertical grip is attached to the bottom fourth. The remaining components of this grenade launcher seem to be custom built and remain to be identified, conforming to its design as a prototype weapon. In use, the grenade launcher is fired from the hip and boasts a great firepower to be used against the deadlier foes. It's capable of firing three different types of 40mm ammunition found throughout the game, each of which are deadlier to specific types of bioorganic weapons. The grenade rounds explode upon impact and can cause widespread damage to nearby targets, often defeating enemies in one blow, especially against zombies, crimson heads, and chimeras. The incendiary rounds will catch enemies on fire within its blast radius and will leave zombies charred, unable to resurrect. These flame rounds will also be most effective to ignite plant and arachnid enemies such as the web spinners and plant 42. And lastly, we have the acid rounds. Look what I've found. What? A can of fizz. It's sure to yellow and mellow those things. The acid rounds will burst with sulfuric acid upon impact this acid will burn the flesh of its targets and becomes most effective against the reptilian BOWs, such as Hunters or Yawn. Compared to the previous rounds, it has the shortest range, but can be increased by aiming the barrel upward. The flame rounds can be lobbed even further, but fall short of the explosive rounds, which can shoot out to the furthest of the three. Oddly enough, the grenade launcher has no reload animation. You can only load rounds through the inventory menu to which you will find out that it has no maximum capacity, regardless of which ammo you use. Five years after the Resident Evil remake, The Umbrella Chronicles released for the Nintendo Wii in 2007. With the return of the Mansion incident, most of the weapons came along with it, although the grenade launcher is no longer found in the same place. Instead, Forrest Speyer is encountered as a zombie on the West Terrace balcony, and his grenade launcher is nowhere to be seen. It doesn't actually become obtainable until the Rebirth chapter, found in the main hall of the mansion when playing as Albert Wesker. Once selected in the menus, its description reads, A wide range of destruction makes it perfect for clearing out groups. And in use, it's known to be the most balanced when compared to the other two grenade launchers of the game. It can only fire explosive shells, as specialty munitions weren't featured in the Umbrella Chronicles. At first glance, we both preferred the grenade launcher's updated appearance in the Resident Evil remake, but came to appreciate its original design once we discovered its roots and the backstory behind it. While it was only featured once more in the Umbrella Chronicles, we wouldn't mind to have seen it return in recent titles. Even though the grenade launcher ended up being the wrong choice for Forrest Speyer, it proved itself to be a devastating weapon when fighting amongst the other BOWs. Perhaps if Forrest managed to survive the crow attack, the events of the Mansion incident would have played out differently, and the grenade launcher would have then earned its position to be officially adopted by STARS. For this video's community spotlight, we wanted to direct your attention to JC Collection, who created his own replica of Forrest's prototype grenade launcher. 
This piece is custom built using various components, such as a King Arms lower receiver and Knight's armament attachments, such as the vertical grip and rail covers. The rest of the gun is hand built and custom machined, even catching the finest details, such as the plexiglass front sight and adjustable rear. We never thought we'd see a replica of this grenade launcher, but with visionary planning and fine craftsmanship, a challenging project like this can be brought to life. So, that's it for Forrest Speyer's grenade launcher, the prototype model tested in combat lecture and field use for the arsenal of stars. Be sure to check out the Kendo Gun Shop Instagram page at kendo.gunshop. If you'd like to help the Kendo Gun Shop expand its business past Raccoon City, share the video with your friends to help spread the word, or feel free to leave us a tip over at our Patreon, link in the description. Make sure to leave us a comment on what guns from the series you'd like to see a video on next, and don't forget to come back and visit us at the Gun Shop for more content about the firearms of Resident Evil.